Thomas Edison once said, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Indeed, life is a ridiculous red race. Success is always associated with back-breaking hard work. But when I look at Dr. David Yonggi Cho, the founder of the world's largest church and its amazing ministry, you would think that to grow such a mega church, it must have taken him lots and lots of toiling and tremendous hard work. Well, recently Kong and I had the honor of spending time with Dr. Cho. And guess what? In his own words, he told us that 70% of his ministry time is spent doing nothing but resting in the presence and promises of God. How can that be? Well, over the next few weeks, Kong will be sharing with us the secret behind the rest of faith. Promises mean much to each of us, and we all value those who keep their promises to us. The promises of God are yes and amen. Every good gift that He has prepared for you is irrevocable. It will never return to Him void. It will always be fulfilled in your life. Kong and Son have put together a collection of promises from God's Word called Irrevocable. To receive your copy of Irrevocable, please visit konghee.com. These unchanging promises will give you the encouragement and hope you need to face the challenges of life. Help Kong continue to reach a world that needs this powerful truth. Again, please visit the website to order your copy from Kong He Ministries. Look for the offer Irrevocable, promises from God directly for your life today. God has given each of us promises to comfort, encourage, and bring joy even during the most troubling times. Visit konghee.com to get your copy of Irrevocable. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for He who promised is faithful. I want to start by talking to you just for a little moment about my pastor, Dr. Cho. When we look at Dr. Yonggi Cho's ministry, it's very easy to conclude that for him to have such a big revival and to build the world's largest single mega church of 800,000 people, it must be work, work, work. Toil, toil, toil. It must be hard labor and struggling from morning to night. After all, they have early morning prayer meeting at five o'clock every morning. And they say down that by 4.30, the place is packed. So I know you're feeling sorry for the church workers already. And then they have their all-night Friday prayer meeting. And above and beyond that, they have multiple, multiple services all throughout the week. 
They have evangelism ministry. They have community services that far exceeds ours. They have an entire town, an Elim town, dedicated to community work. They have global missions. In Korea alone, they have 500 churches. Somebody say, wow, yeah? 500 churches in Korea alone. They have 70 churches in Japan. 30 years, they built 70 churches. And they have churches all around the world. And they have one to 2,000 members added to the church every month. 10,000 decisions coming to Christ every single month. And mind you, the man is already retired and the church is still going strong. And you must be thinking, Dr. Cho, it must be such hard work, toiling and struggling. But let me tell you, there's tremendous joy in Dr. Cho's ministry. He said, Kong, you know why? In the last 50 over years of ministry, we have done so much. I've done a lot. But there's such an ease to it because I've learned the secret of entering into the rest of faith, into the rest of faith, into God's rest, resting in God. Two weeks ago, Dr. Cho encouraged Sun and I to have another look at the book of Genesis. So will you turn with me in your Bible to Genesis chapter 2, and we want to look at verses 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended His work which He had done, and He rested on the seventh day from all His work which He had done. God rested on the seventh day. So for six days, God created the whole world, the whole universe. On the seventh day, He rested. You say, oh my, oh my, God must be so tired. God must be so exhausted. No, of course not. The Lord your God neither sleep nor slumber. He doesn't get tired. Now, God rested from His work only because He was finished. He was finished. So, it doesn't mean God was tired. God was exhausted. And by the way, to be resting doesn't mean He became idle or passive or indifferent or He stopped caring from the seventh day onward. He became careless, that God just lays around the place. No, what it meant was this. He had finished all the work He wanted to do, and there was nothing more to add to what He had already done. Now, remember this. Man was created at the very end of the sixth day. We are created right at the end of day number six. So what was the first day for Adam and Eve? The first day of man was the Sabbath. So man was to increase, to conquer, to have dominion through rest. Listen carefully. We are to expand. We are to increase. We are to have dominion of the whole world through rest. Wow, how does that work? Now, the Sabbath is not a day when we become lazy or idle or fleshly, get into the flesh. The Bible gives us a glimpse. Psalm 92 is a song for the Sabbath day. If you go home and read Psalm 92, if you just turn to it, there's a title. It's the song for the Sabbath day. And if you read the entire Psalm, it is a day of worship. The day of rest is a day of communion and fellowshipping with God, and that is why we are in church. It is the day of walking by faith, of making faith proclamation. It is a day to be empowered by the Spirit of God. It is in Psalms 92 and verse 10, My horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. So what is the rest of God? The rest of God is really a time for us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His mind. To enter into God's rest is to come into a zone, to come into a realm where you're not moving by your own strength, where you're moving by the strength of the Spirit. We don't have to strive. We don't have to struggle. We don't have to toil throughout our life. 
We simply lean on the authority and the power of Jesus Christ. And this was how Adam did it. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. God blessed them. God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. By the way, in the Bahasa Indonesian Bible, the word to subdue is translated as conquer. So we are to conquer. And how many of you know we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ our Lord, through Christ. So we are to do all this. Adam exercised his dominion over the earth. How? By calling out the animals and by naming them. And he realized one thing. There was no striving. There was no struggling. There was no hard slogging. He didn't need to fight with the lions and the bears and the dinosaurs and the whales and the eagles in the air to subdue them. He simply spoke the word by the power and the authority and he realized there's authority being released through the words of his mouth. There was a supernatural ease for him to subdue the earth. Adam was resting in God, leaning on God, and through rest, conquered the world. Similarly, the Bible tells us this. We are to reign as kings in life, to exercise dominion on earth. Now, dominion means the right to command. So dominion and authority is released through our mouth. What we say, our words, are very, very powerful. So Adam exercised dominion by speaking, by praying, by praising, by prophesying through his profession. He didn't need to labor and toil and slog it out with a lot of heartaches. But since the fall of man in the garden, we've been toiling, we've been striving in our own strength, in our cleverness. We go to school and it's a good thing, we get a, a higher education so that we can get ahead in life. And we slog very hard. And if we are not careful, our heart will depart from the Lord in the midst of all our worries and stress and frustration. Everything that God has done since the fall of man was to restore us back to complete rest in Him. Will we be the head and not the tail? Yes. Will we be above and not beneath? Yes. But how do we do it? We do it by entering into the rest of God. Oh, wow. In Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 29, it says this. Let's all read this together. Two verses starting now. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus has come to give us supernatural rest for our souls. That means deep down inside, while we are working, while we are existing in life, while we are in our campuses, in the marketplaces, while we are going out there, reigning as kings, there should be a peace, a gentleness, a calm assurance. We are to be yoked. That means to be connected only to Christ. Now, a yoke is an instrument for work. So God is not saying you don't work anymore. God is not saying you lace around and you idle around. God is saying this, as you work, you are connected to Jesus Christ. You are yoked only to Jesus. So we are doing everything by His strength, in His authority, exercising His power. There's no more toiling by our own self-efforts, by our own cleverness, by our own strategies, by our own strength. So when we need provision, we have this assurance, my God shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. By who? By Christ Jesus. So when it comes to money, while I'm working in the marketplace, I'm connected to Jesus, my source. When you need healing, what do you do? You say, by His stripes, 
I'm healed. So while you go to the medical doctors, while you exercise, while you try your best to have as good a health as you can, you are connected to Jesus, knowing that in Jesus Christ, you will live a long, healthy life. Somebody say amen. When you need prayer answers, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You're connected to Jesus. When you need strength, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you need other stuff like peace over worry and stress, you say, I cast all my cares upon Jesus for He cares for me. I'm yoked to Him. When you have desires to be fulfilled, you say, well, I delight myself in the Lord Jesus Christ and He shall fulfill the desires of my heart. You're connected to Him. When it comes to victory over personal weaknesses, you say, I have this faith that His grace is sufficient for me, for His strength is made perfect in my weaknesses. When I need victory over Satan, over demonic powers, I say the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Come on, let's give the Lord a big clap. It's always Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. So we are connected to Him. There is a supernatural ease. Jesus expects us to learn from Him. Say, come, take my yoke, learn from me. How did Jesus do it? John 14 and verse 10. Do you not believe that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. So Jesus says, I'm your example. Learn how I do it. I'm yoked to God, my heavenly Father. So as I work, there is an ease. There is an authority. There is a power. God, my Father, is working through me. And this is how we enter into God's rest. We similarly are yoked to Jesus as we work, as we study, as we progress, as we forge ahead. There is no stress. There is no panic. There is no fear. There is no worry. There is no palpitation of the heart. There is no frustration. Because everything you do, you do it through the strength of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, the Son can do nothing of Himself but what He sees the Father do. Jesus says, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. A very good example of this was when Jesus was crossing the Sea of Galilee. The boat was hit by a ferocious storm. Satan had one objective, to capsize the ship, to kill Jesus, all His disciples, and destroy His ministry. Disciples were panicking. They are wondering, Jesus, don't you care for us? God, where are you? I mean, isn't it so true? Whenever we are faced with a crisis, whenever we are faced with a challenge, so very often it's very easy for us to blame God. Jesus, what are you doing? Where was Jesus? He was sleeping at the back of the boat in the midst of a demonic storm. How did he do it? So calm, so at peace, so confident. He was in the rest of God his Father in the midst of all the challenges. Everybody say out loud with me. Say, I need to live in the rest of God. I like to call entering God's rest the rest of faith. And that's what faith is. Faith is not a struggle. Faith it's a rest. Faith is coming to a place where God is fighting for you. A place where you are leaning on the authority and the power of God. One man who had learned the secret of living in the rest of faith was Abraham. Now remember, Abraham had many wonderful visions and encounters with God. But so very often, after his encounters, Satan came along and discouraged him. Let me tell you this. The devil is not going to let you 
come into the blessings of God without a fight. You're going to find after every great victory, Satan comes back and he's an expert in counterpunching. He's very good at counterpunching. I have found sometimes when I have a great service and many people get saved, well, at the end of the night before I sleep, the devil will come and say something to discourage me. Or I will hear something that will pull me down. He's just an expert in counterpunching. So you've got to be aware the devil is a roaring lion seeking to devour. So you've got to be aware of what the devil is going to do. But greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Somebody say amen. Now, after a while, Abraham had all his encounters, all his visions, but he got discouraged. He got worried. He got so frustrated. By the time we come to Genesis 15, he got angry with God. He said, God, what's the point of giving me all the visions? What's the point of telling me I'm going to be a father of many nations? Look, I don't even have a son. All you have given me was Eliezer, my heir. God, how do you expect me to do your will? He got an attitude. He got upset with the Lord. You know, and, and he was on the brink of giving up. And to make matter worse, in his self-efforts, in his own cleverness, he produced Ishmael in the flesh. He tried to help God. He tried to get a hand in his life using his own strengths. And Ishmael became an immense source of pain and heartache, not only for him, but for the entire family. Then he learned one thing. He learned that all God wanted him to do was very simple. Simply to believe and to trust His promises. Just believe and the miracles will come. What is the fight all about? The fight is really just the fight of faith. Just believe. I tell you sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. Just believe. So in Romans 4 verse 17, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Abraham learned that faith has to do with your mouth. That you got to call those things that do not exist as though they did. And then verse 18, who contrary to hope, in hope believe. So he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Abraham learned that faith is not based on your feelings or based on what you see or your outward circumstances. That when you are faced with a challenge, don't panic. Don't become fearful. Don't try to help God in the flesh. Don't try through your own cleverness to do things by your own strength. Simply walk by faith and not by sight. Now, and then verse 20, He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what He had promised he was able to perform. So Abraham didn't need to strive, to struggle, to toil. All he needed to do was to trust in the promises of God, giving God glory by praising Him, by worshipping Him, by trusting in His promises and speaking it into existence. And at the age of 100 years old, he got Isaac. And that's the result of the rest of faith. Come on, let's give God a big clap. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand. Isn't it interesting to know that man's very first day of existence was on the Sabbath day? God's will for us is not to live a life of struggle and toil. God wants us to enter into His rest and through that become strong in Christ and in the power of His might. His perfect plan is for us to conquer and have dominion through rest. We need to change our mindsets. Stop worrying. 
trust God's promises to come to pass in your life. When we can trust Him and His Word, the rest of faith becomes our daily reality. Have you been toiling or feeling drained and overwhelmed by the pressures of life? Well, Jesus can give you supernatural rest for your soul. He says to us, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Won't you say this prayer with me right now with all of your heart? Dear Jesus Christ, forgive me for depending on my own strength and not trusting in your promises. Right now, I ask that you will come into my heart and strengthen me. As I put my trust in you, give me peace in my soul. Give me rest from all my heavy burdens. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Promises mean much to each of us. And we all value those who keep their promises to us. The promises of God are yes and amen. Every good gift that He has prepared for you is irrevocable. It will never return to Him void. It will always be fulfilled in your life. Kong and Son have put together a collection of promises from God's Word called Irrevocable. To receive your copy of Irrevocable, please visit konghee.com. These unchanging promises will give you the encouragement and hope you need to face the challenges of life. Help Kong continue to reach a world that needs this powerful truth. Again, please visit the website to order your copy from Kong He Ministries. Look for the offer Irrevocable, promises from God directly for your life today. God has given each of us promises to comfort, encourage, and bring joy even during the most troubling times. Visit konghee.com to get your copy of Irrevocable. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for He who promised is faithful. Son, I pray that you'll stop worrying and trust fully in God's promises to you. We love and appreciate you so much. Be, Be blessed. blessed. Bye. Bye. This is